The line of sight tab has several sub tools, the selection, the line, rectangle, and ellipse tool. Each one of these carries with it the context of usage of creating occluders for their line of sight. This functionality is only relevant if the option is toggled on in the play tab. Whether or not this is toggled on, we are still able to add line of sight to our maps. We have several different types of occluders and different ways that we can interact with the line of sight system. Here we have a map with no line of sight attached to it. To add line of sight, we can easily do such by either adding the line, rectangle, or ellipse tool. We can select the type of occluder that we want. For this tree, we will select terrain and drag out a circle for the rough shape of our object. We are now able to switch over to the selection mode and move each of these occluders individually to adjust the shape of this to more accurately represent the object we are trying to occlude from our line of sight. Each one of these types of occluders carries with it its own way of interacting with the system. Terrain, for example, is toggleable and also allows for seeing into but not through. Most of this will only be relevant once toggled on and we have active tokens on the playfield. Occluders can be used and put over top of each other to make complex interactions of line of sight. For example, we are able to use terrain in many different ways to get different varied effects depending on what we're trying to achieve. One of the ways that we can do this is by using the ability to see into but not through as a way of propagating certain visual behavior and reproducing that in 2D space. Grabbing the rectangle tool and making sure that we have terrain selected, I will adjust this rooftop to more accurately represent the way that one might actually visualize a roof in the real world. What this will allow us to do, again, is to see into, but not through. Having this a common seed area, but on the other side of this, depending on our visual direction, not the other side of the roof. This will allow us to see anybody who is standing on the roof on this side or at the peak, but not on the opposite side. Again, we can also adjust these by zooming in and snapping all of this together. for more accurate representations and a clean example. These can also be changed and adjusted at any time in the future. To demonstrate this usage, we'll grab a character from the combat tracker and place it on the playing field and toggle on line of sight. Once this is selected, you will see that we are now able to interact with the line of sight system and get a preview of how this will be seen by players. In an event like this, we will be able to see one side of the roof, but not the other. This will include the peak. Here, because the line of sight system is tied into the play mechanics, characters hidden in line of sight will not be visible to other players. Therefore, NPCs hiding on one side of a roof will not show up to a player unless they are in an area in which they are able to be seen. 
complex systems of line of sight can be created by using multiple different types of occluders in inventive and imaginative ways. Unlike terrain, there are two types of actions that occluders are commonly used for, blocking up vision and blocking up movement, and we have several occluders that control these in different ways. The baseline occluder is the wall. A wall is a single line occluder which blocks all movement and all vision through it. Switching back into the play mode and selecting our character, you can see that this wall blocks all vision. Nothing can be seen behind the wall. Also, all movement by our character is also blocked by the wall. However, a terrain occluder, like we have here, only blocks vision on the other side, allowing us to see the object that is blocking. It does not affect any movement whatsoever. Therefore, a player can move inside of a terrain and has full vision out. As we see here, terrain blocks all vision on the other side of the image, but nothing going into the image. Once a token goes into that occluder space, goes into the terrain space, we are now unobstructed, as if we are hiding inside of a bush and looking out. Once outside of that bush, we can now see the bush but we can see nothing on the other side of that bush. Therefore, the terrain is great for doing things like hills, bushes, and other obstacles that other players may interact with. It does not block any movement, only vision. From the GN's perspective, we also have a toggleable element from this piece itself. By clicking on this, we can open that up and therefore remove any sort a visual impairment created by the occluder itself. This option is not available on walls. Therefore, if we were to switch back over into our line of sight, selecting this, this layer and selecting a rectangle with the wall, we're able to create a barrier that will never be able to be passed by a player and never be able to be seen into by a player, regardless of where the player is. Therefore, as this player moves around a solid structure, they have no hope of ever seeing what is on the other side or moving through this obstacle. A GM may move a player through any occluder by holding shift. From inside of here, the player would only be able to see the roof and nothing else. If this were, as we can see over here, a terrain type of occluder, the player would be able to independently climb on the roof and once there, be able to see everything around unobstructed. Once on one side of the roof, they would be obstructed by the occluders that they are now outside of. This would alleviate them from the ability to see anything beyond except their side of the roof, giving a little bit more of a natural kind of feeling of how that might interact in a real world scenario. Other occluders include doors, toggleable walls, windows, illusionary walls, pits, and simple shadow casters. The way that these are all set up interact with the system in a much more natural and intuitive way, allowing for fast replication and creation of all line of sight necessities. Creating a door that goes inside of a wall is as simple as selecting the door, 
the rectangle, making sure that we have the trim interior occluder selected, and drawing out our door. This will immediately trim out any excess elements that we do not any longer require and allow us an interactable occluder that players and GMs can now interact with during the play session. Selecting the play tab and our token, we are now able to move up to a door and open it, allowing us access to the inside. Again, we can shut this door. We're able to click on it and shut the occluder, preventing us from movement and vision. A GM can hold shift and lock the door so that players are unable to open this door. The same is true with windows and other type occluders. This creates a much more streamlined experience and immersive elements for our gameplay. Inside of our occluders as well, we have the ability to add a peek through element. Selecting these occluders and changing this value, we're able to show certain amount of the inside based off of our grid system. This will give us one square of vision inside of all of the occluders that we have selected. This will give us one square of peek through or variation from our lighting to the actual occluder itself to where the lighting system begins to interact. And we can change this to whatever we might wish. Therefore, if we want to have a small amount of the image to be shown to our players, we can use our peek through amount to adjust this. Zero being directly at the occluder line. This can be useful in areas such as dungeons where we want to have a little bit of the wall exposed without having to readjust all of the occluders set up for us. Since painting elements have no metadata attached to it, we are able to quickly generate any data that we need in the line of sight system by a simple push of a button. Painted lines or fill elements can be turned into occluders by a simple push of a button from two areas inside of the workspace. One, we may do it from the edit area in the painting tab. Here we have a button that says duplicate paint layer as walls. We also have duplicate selection as walls. We are able to grab a selection and duplicate that as an occluder. Or we can do the entire layer in one click of a button. This will create a new wall layer for us with all of that now being able to be used inside of our line of sight system. Also, this may be generated inside of the line of sight tab by simply selecting the duplicate paint layer as walls and having the same area selected. Once it is created, we can then come in and adjust this in any way that we wish so that we can interact with the system in a similar way as we had previously. Again, we are able to add in any additional elements that we might want with this by adding in windows, doors, and any other elements that we might need. The line of sight system consists of walls, 
terrain, doors, toggleable walls, windows, illusory walls, pits, and shadow casters. Each one of these elements carries with it its own unique way of interacting with tokens, either visually or through movement. Walls stop all movement and vision. Terrain does not hinder movement and only blocks lighting from the opposite corner. Thus, you can see inside of that element. Doors prevent all movement but is interactable from a player's standpoint if allowed by the GM. Toggleable walls work similarly to doors yet give no indication to the player that they exist and thus cannot be interacted with from the player's standpoint, only from the GM. Windows do not block any line of sight, only movement. Windows can be used in several different use case scenarios to block movement when needed, but also in the classic standpoint of a window. Illusory walls only stop vision and no movement. Pits. Pits do not block any movement in, only out, and do not block any vision in, only out. Therefore, if a token were to move into a pit, it will not be able to escape on its own and will not be able to see anything outside of that area. Many of these options are toggleable when placed and therefore change the way that they interact with the system once put down in the image workspace. Creating a pit As one can see, as the GM, I am notified at the location of where the pit is. From a player standpoint, though, no indication would be available. A player now moving inside of the pit will have no ability to escape and no vision out. Once the GM toggles that off, the player is now able to move out of and see out of the pit. An illusory wall will block all vision, but no movement. This can be used for curtains and so on. Windows and doors are able to be interacted with from a player if allowed by the GM. Both windows and doors are unable to be moved through. However, a door will block all vision, whereas a window will block none. Both are toggleable. A GM can shift click to lock a window or a door, allowing no interaction from the player. 